As divers continue to search for bodies, there's growing disbelief at how a multi-million dollar ship could hit rocks and capsize in one of the world's most highly travelled sea routes. So far, six people have been confirmed dead and at least 15 are still missing after the accident off the coast of Italy. The cruise company is pointing the finger at the captain of the Costa Concordia. But victims' advocates say when in trouble, mega cruise liners are too big to be safe. Sarah Dingle reports. On behalf of the captain, to inform you that due to an electrical fault which is currently under control, we're currently in a blackout. And at that point, the boat started sinking more and more on the side we were at, and we made that decision at that point that we had to get off. And it's a good thing we did because it, the part that is now underwater is where we were standing. We still feel so fortunate. We feel so fortunate that we made it on a boat because others didn't. I would have thought that would happen in the year of the Titanic, and it certainly wouldn't happen in the year of modern technology, uh, sophisticated navigation, and also crews that should be uh, trained and skilled to be able to cope with circumstances like this. It was named for peace and goodwill between nations. Built and launched in Italy in 2005, the Costa Concordia was the country's largest cruise ship, able to treat its 4,000-odd passengers to all the comforts of a high-class resort. But on the weekend, this luxury liner turned into a nightmare. A few short hours after the cruise began, the Costa Concordia had hit a rock, ripping a huge gash in its hull. Talked about 75 metres in the media, so uh, that indicates to me it was going at a reasonable speed, one would have thought, but uh, mind you, ships aren't really built to uh, withstand collisions with rocks at almost any speed. The head of Shipping Australia, Lou Russell, says the accident is unfathomable, given the amount of state-of-the-art technology on board. They have very, very good radar systems, uh, both short and long. Uh, they can see, uh, uh, have very good uh, visual, particularly for um, uh, things that are in a depth sounding, and of course, um, under keel clearance, uh, what they mean is they can see what's uh, the amount of water they've got and how it's shallowing or whatever. They have a great deal of technology that gives them a lot of information on board that bridge. As it sank, the Costa Concordia was at most only a few hundred metres from the island of Giglio in the Mediterranean Sea. The owners of the ship Costa Cruises have been quick to point the finger at the ship's master, saying there may have been significant human error on the part of Captain Francesco Chettino. I mean, that is also, as I said, perplexing because there's usually more than one officer on the bridge. Um, um, again, I, I, I can't comment on that, um, but um, uh, maybe there's more than the master involved in, in, in the human error. But Captain Chettino says he was let down by the charts. I firmly believe that the rocks were not detected as the ship was not heading forwards but sideways, as if underwater there was this rock projection. I don't know if it was detected or not, but on the nautical chart it was marked just as water at some 100 to 150 metres from the rocks, and we were about 300 metres from the shore more or less. The charts were certainly in the Mediterranean uh, are, are well tested and well tried, they're, they're well travelled routes. Uh, the ships travel there on, on a regular basis and we would expect the charts to be of the highest order. The Australian Maritime College's Captain John Lloyd is a veteran of maritime logistics and crew training. He says however well trained the crew, the speed with which the ship sank meant panic amongst the passengers was almost inevitable. So those people would have been in very unfamiliar surroundings, in a ship that suddenly moved to lean over at a very sharp angle. Uh, their whole orientation uh, and understanding of where they were would have been very, very challenging for them. Get the kids, go, go. They would have been unfamiliar with the life-saving equipment and they would have been unfamiliar with the life jackets that they were expected to put on and to wear. I'm getting pushed. Passengers told of being turned back again and again from full lifeboats. The ship will have listed over, we understand very quickly, to a high um, leaning to one side, a list, and it may not have been possible to launch all of the life-saving appliances um, in, in the manner in which they would have perhaps planned to in the first instance. 
those who did make it looked back in disbelief. These ships have become too big with too many people for us to be able to say that they are safe for passengers and crew that are sailing on them. Mark Brimble's former wife, Diane Brimble, died on board a cruise ship in suspicious circumstances in 2002, triggering an inquest. Now Vice President of International Cruise Victims Australia, Mr Brimble says the ever-increasing size of cruise liners means they're a disaster waiting to happen. You have ships like this that have so many people on board, you start to wonder whether or not they've ever practiced removing four or five thousand people from a ship in the time that was required. This is going to happen again, whether or not it's striking an iceberg or striking a rock. These ships are going to get affected. We're going to have to get passengers off in emergency and the crews have got to be skilled. I doubt whether or not the companies are keeping ahead of what they need to do with the number of people that they've got on board these ships. As divers scour the wreck for more bodies, Italian authorities are mounting a criminal investigation. The ship will carry the same sort of equipment as an aeroplane carries in the event of a casualty, the black box is recovered and that will record very precisely the, the movements of the engine's uh, steering gear, the machinery, the speed that the ship was going and its precise location. Well, you know, the buck's got to stop with somebody and it stops with the company that's operating these cruise liners. The company that's put the captain on board this ship has got to have ensured that he was capable he was skilled and he had the ability to take the responsibility of four, almost 4,000 people on board that ship.